here at the Engine Performance Expo, We've got a round table discussion, but we've also got people commenting out there on YouTube and we encourage you. Questions throughout the day, I'll hit the panel with them a little bit and uh, stay involved. We want people to be as involved as is possible, especially in these round table discussions. One person saying that their brain is already melting in the morning. Good, job done. <laughs> and, 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 and I appreciate it as well, I just love this stuff. And uh, we encourage you to share and subscribe and let's get this out there as much as is possible. But I, I do want to take a second before we introduce our panel to thank the people who genuinely make it possible. Of course, we're here at Straub Technologies, and so this great studio facility is available to us. Thank you very much, Chris, uh, you and your folks. But Driven Oil, yep. of course, uh, on board, Rottler, of course, Mala involved, folks at Goodson heavily involved. And we've got uh, next door, you're seeing like the eye in the sky view of what's going on out there in the machine shop. It's like a whole social scene out there and racers are hanging out networking and exchanging ideas it's great there's a product display of course comp cams edelbrock get them performance we're going to learn a little yep. bit about more about those guys later on today total seal of course we keep saying rottler because they're so heavily involved uh making chips over there in the other room yep. cwt that's randy neal's company super excited valvoline holly efi oh my goodness without holly efi Think about all the stuff that they have done over the years. Morel lifters. How great was John Callies yesterday? Get awesome. it. We tricked him so We got badly. him. We got him. He that was won great. the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award yesterday. He thought he was presenting the award. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm going to present the award to somebody. And uh, he was the recipient. And, of course, uh, his Morel lifters and Straub Technologies. Guys, thank you so much for supporting the Engine Performance Expo. And to everybody out there watching and, and viewing now and in the future, you might not need these products now. But when you do, remember how involved they were and how they made this possible. Exactly. So with that segue, look at this panel. This yeah. is awesome. George Bryce back. He's rocking his plaid. Yeah. I love it. George's is like a fashion plate, of course. <laughs> He's a fashion <laughs> icon. <laughs> I got the moon West, eyes Billy Godbold, Ben, of course, who's a star celebrity. And then there's Lake. Somebody says, sit on your hands, Lake. I disagree. I would not understand you without the... Uh, I, I can't speak. I wouldn't understand what you're I saying. I have no Italian. We, we've done all the, you know, 23 and me and all the ancestry stuff. My wife's got like 20% Italian. I got none. But you would not know that by the way I talk with my hands. Yes. Yeah. Right? Well, good. Because that, you're changing the stereotype. Look, look, it's exactly. not just us. I need a helmet over here. <laughs> yeah. 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 George, you watch out. You got the Ricky Bobby gene that you and I share. <laughs> yeah. 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 But anyway, I'll say this. After that last video doing all the work with combustion analysis. Ben, you have absolutely ruined me now. <laughs> the dyno is not fun without in-cylinder combustion analysis. Yeah, unfortunately, that's one of those things that after you do it, you go, oh, I don't want to go back to tuning engines the other way anymore. You know, it, 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 it's not practical to do it for every single engine, but boy, you sort of wish it was, because it, it's a game changer, yeah. for mm -hmm. sure. I remember the first time Mark showed me one of the results back when you were doing the R07 engine, and I was like, oh, this is kind of neat. But then to actually hands on and do it, it's like, oh, that's so good. Yeah. What what Ben just said though, it's not practical to do every engine. Like we don't do we do very seldom do combustion analysis. We do it on a new engine, we do it on a fuel change or something like mm -hmm. that. But we our stuff is so common, so that you're, you're building that identical. little changes we yeah, we're building identical, we use the same manifold, right. same it, it to us tuning a carburetor is very hard to do with combustion analysis because it's mm -hmm. the things as bad as people don't like carburetors, they're pretty simple and they pretty work pretty dang yeah. pretty they're hard to good. beat. Yes, and it really doesn't need you know, I mean you can't learn right. that much doing combustion stuff. So you either. guys do it like if you're trying to move the ball, right? You're trying to develop new parts yes, or something. Exactly, but we don't do it on our, our, our Xfinity motors. We probably haven't done it in five years. Mm -hmm. It's the same package. It's probably been longer than that because same manifold, same carburetor, same fuel, same everything. So pretty you hard know, to now imagine something change, yes, right? you know. Our biggest thing we like to do with is individual cylinder camshafts. Sure. You know, what the cylinder's not working, this one is working, what are we gonna do with cam timing and yeah. stuff? Like that. Well, talking about fuel is a huge market. You know, yes. think about like a couple of years ago, the 400 inch Australian uh, pro stock guys. You know, they went from all oh, leaded yes. fuel got banned, yes. and suddenly yep. everyone was like, "Whoa! Now yes. what do we do?" That was a huge deal right. for them. Right. But like you said, now that they kind of have it figured out, it's like eh, I don't have to do it all right. the time. 
it's really it's definitely more of a development tool it's than definitely a, a development. It's tool. not going to replace your dyno. Right. So no. You remember when, back in the day when we first got our very first wideband, our very first NTK yeah. sensor for air fuel ratios, mm -hmm. and how revolutionary that was wow. in that moment. Yeah. And then when you got eight of them, it was like you know, oh my gosh, we're going to win every race now, and no, <laughs> hope nobody, else, I hope nobody else can have these. You know, we're the only guy with these, and I and I was part of the. Um, when Superflow first came out, they had a pretty heavy wheel yeah. for the with the teeth on it for us to keep up with the crank angle, and uh, that was pretty scary because we had those come loose in the dyno room and <laughs> and stuff like that. And the sensors cost a million dollars, it seemed like, and they got broke or burn up quick, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. But um, nowadays, man, things move so fast, and it's very interesting to see when you got it going the way you did on this video and you and I talk about it sometimes it's been very intriguing to see the potential for the future now with different tools than we've never had before. It's definitely a way to learn a lot about engines in a really short period of time I mean and, and like Billy you and I have had lots of conversations I don't know to be perfectly honest when I first started doing combustion analysis which in our in fairness was a long time ago but I don't know that I realized that it was so connected to camshaft you're you're you know, looking at the four-stroke cycle in terms of pressure, and you're going over here going, oh, well, you can see that's closing early and that's closing late. Like, there's just so much to be gained in knowledge of how the engine works and what's happening that goes beyond just, like, tuning the laptop sort of thing. Right. You know? Yeah, I, th I don't think that, you know, some of those things when you start looking at components, so if you go in there and you're going, okay, well, carburetors make power, headers yeah. make power, intakes make power, spark makes power. You know, there's all these kind of things you go, oh, these things are making power. But really, the only thing that's moving your vehicle down the track is pressure. So yep. fundamentally, you're trying to make pressure mm -hmm. during that stroke mm -hmm. that pushes the piston down, that drives the crankshaft, mm -hmm. goes to the transmission, gets to the tires, moves the vehicle. We start with pressure, and then we, we lose us. Right, all, all those exactly. Stories. There's all losses in there. So some of the times when you're doing tuning, you're like not thinking about what am I really trying to do? So, you know, when you're doing a, a header, you're trying to get the pressure wave to come back there to create signal. And what's that signal? It's pressure. Mm -hmm. To create low pressure in the chamber to pull the intake charge in. You're actually pulling the intake charge in while the piston's going up. Mm -hmm. You know, so think about what that means. You have to have enough pressure. You're taking that blow down, that sharp wave out, reflecting it in the collector, moving it back to the chamber, it gets there right as the intake valve's open, the exhaust is still open, the intake valve's opening, to have the piston coming up while it's pushing exhaust gases out and to create such low pressure in there that your intake manifold wave that's gone up to the bell and come back is higher pressure in the intake port than there is in the chamber so that it brings air in. You can model this, you can think about it to your blue in the face, <laughs> but until you have a pressure probe in there and actually see it, yep. it's sort of it's sort of paradigm changing. Yeah. And then when you start really thinking about what you're trying to do, all the magic goes away. Yep. Yeah. You know, in cylinder pressure just disrobes everyone. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, you know it well from the NASCAR thing. You know, yeah, I was gonna go say to, do all that and then I'll put them in a common playroom and let it all talk to each other. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. that yeah, was but, it. No, man. it was like yeah. crazy how they all talk to each other and how this this one's robbing that one, this one's doing this one, this mm -hmm. one's like, you know, it's like crazy how all that goes it's on. It's like you said, it totally disrobed it because you're like, well, now I can see we did a bunch of playing around with headers, and you're like, but if I change the header, then all of a sudden the intake on this side is changing. Like, how is that possible? Well, right. they're communicating across yes. that. Right, and you saw that with the, four, with the two headers, right? Absolutely. You put all one length on yep. there, it does one thing. Put a short one on this one, a long one on this one, does something. Yep. Swap size, it does something different. Put both short ones on. Yep. Anything you do does different. You're always robbing. And then you get with the like your motors, the 670, the 510 stuff, you're restricted in the amount of air. Yep. And you start looking at it, you go, man, that cylinder's really weak. This cylinder back here is down five horsepower. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get that five horsepower back, and all of a sudden I'm going to be up five on the whole field. You work, 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 get four on this one back, and you're you like, You lost oh, four on the other one. But you're <laughs> sonic through the deal, and yes. you know, there's only so much yes. air, and you're there like going, I've lost three and a half. So you did all this work, and you did pick up four horsepower here. Yep. But at the end of but the day, you're, not, you're, only, you're only up you know, a quarter horsepower. How many times have you made camshafts that got this slope separation and this degrees, two degrees smaller in the middle, two degrees bigger on the ends, or opposite way of people playing yeah. with this and trying to get it in it? 
Yeah. Well, I think we saw that. Like we saw that recently. Yeah, you know, what goes on in your world is yes. super, super hush hush. Right. But I guarantee you that nobody's running the same. And there's not a cup car out there that has the same spark timing on mm -hmm. every cylinder. Mm -hmm. There's not a cup car out there that has the same injector timing and pulse width on each cylinder. Each cylinder is individually tuned. You can only do that with pressure. Well, the camshaft's the same way. So the thing is, is that it's not this huge difference. You know, it's, it's when, if you're 10% off of where you need to be, you don't need to be doing individual cylinder testing. Right. But if you're 1% away, you know, if you're, if you're one hundredth of a second behind the guy who's winning the, the NHRA pro stock race, you better be looking at individuals. Yeah, if, if you're, you're a if tenth you're, behind, that, that's If you're not, a second yeah. behind, yeah, you know, you go, go home, yeah. you're not going to find it. If you're a tenth behind, maybe you think about it. But when you're, th you know, when you're a couple, when you're a hundredth or a thousandth behind, then you need to really focus on that because there's power there. Yeah, and I think that's a good point, George. I don't mean, to cut, yeah, no, I think that's, that's a good point that we want to clarify that. You know, sometimes you you get into this mode of we get talking about all this cool stuff we get to do, mm -hmm. and the guy out there watching is going, well, I can't relate to that. I don't get to do that. You know, it's like I'm not trying to paint this picture that if you don't have this capability, you can't be successful. But what we're talking about is, man, if you really want to get every last little bit mm -hmm. out of it, this is the tool that you're going to have to that's use. That's right. To get there. And another part that's really important, Joe, about all of that is the doggone rings. Because everything we're talking about is pressure, 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 you know, and we have no pressure if we don't contain it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the, we, we, we spend some time on that, but once you turn your attention over here, that sort of sometimes goes away, and you got to have somebody keep, you know, keep it on that show, too, so we can contain all those pressures. Consistency there, right there. I'm, Absolutely. I can't tell you how many times one cylinder won't seal up, and it could change the the tune completely. The whole right. engine. It, it, yeah. Yes. It Even won't. vacuum in yes. the crankcase changes the yes. jetting requirement. Yeah. I'm, I, that blew me away. I'm like, that changed right. the jetting and all we did was change the vacuum in the yep. crankcase? I couldn't believe it. You know, and then you fight this other thing too where you spend all this time getting it just perfect on the dyno and then we got to take it out to the racetrack where then it's not the same anymore. It's no, right? it's got G-force yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's it, a lot harder in carbureted applications than fuel injection. Yeah, yes. yeah. Like yes. what people do, you know, like all this individual cylinder tuning that we're talking about, you can probably do that on a good dyno mm -hmm. and take it to the track and be fine. If you tried to do that, you know, on a st steady dyno and took it to a drag race track, Man, it'd be all and carbureted. It'd be all over the place. Yeah, you, you would almost have to do the tuning at the track with all that equipment in a car, which isn't as easy as you might think. No, but I'll tell you, that's something we're starting to yeah. see more of. Yes. Even at the you know center semi-professional sportsman level, NMCA, we see a lot of cars now that are going down the track with combustion sensors yeah. installed. You know, and now you know you know you can't rules wise you can't like go out there and race and have it be actively controlling yeah, the engine. I think NHRA got mad about that right yeah you know, that you, yeah you know you couldn't have the combustion sensors in the pro stock head because hey you might be tuning it going that's down right the track. yeah but to go out on a test day and collect a bunch of data like that's a really really valuable tool to have yeah, it was so. in the block yeah. <laughs> so, here we go. Here we go. So, this is a great point. Way too long. <laughs> you know, speaking about the, that common plan of manifold and how it can affect things, yes. uh, Rick Fred made a great point when we were talking about Dad's engine and you know it, how it was so far down, right? So, right. so roughly 700 horsepower, brand new, to 480, and we said, okay, we, there's two cylinders that are definitely hurt. We know the ring seal was bad. There was micro welding of the rings. So we know they're hurt. But you do the math, like, well, two cylinders isn't 200, 300 horsepower. Where did it come from? Manifold, It's right? because it those could, two cylinders also affect the other yes. six. Yeah, it, yes. everything gets affected by it. It drags if, the whole if, thing down. If, it's not, if the rings ain't, basically the rings are what's pulling your fuel, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, people think about compression, but it also works the other way, right? Sure. Sure. When it's going down, it's pull, it's helping pull the fuel. So if they ain't pulling, that means the intake ain't doing it, what it's supposed to be doing. Right. Now it's messing up the rest of the world, how we spend so much time working on these manifolds and doing this. If one thing's off, it messes that whole deal up. Exactly. And George, those low friction rings you guys run, mm -hmm. when you take away the crankcase vacuum, they don't seal and that's As why. Well. And the fuel, it's, I tell you, what George said a minute ago, pan back is a huge difference mm -hmm. on tuning because if you don't have your pan backs down, that means your seat, your rings ain't sealing good, and it's not pulling on those intake ports as good, and it just goes to pot after. But that. it's funny if you have like a if you had a the ring that they ran in your your dad's car, mm -hmm. 
it probably wouldn't have changed as much because those weren't those low friction rings at the time. That was probably a much thicker ring and much higher tension ring. Yeah, the old ones and that came out were 043s. Right, right. And it probably, and that's the thing is like you'll see people, like you'll go, you know, I'm not going to name names or say shows, but you'll get some, some TV show that people watch. And they run different pan back and don't see any different power. I know why. But yeah, of course you don't. You've got a, a ring that's that's bigger than Half thicker than my belt, and right. you know it's like, of course, you know it doesn't care because you didn't change the seal at all. Then it's just a little bit different in power. People, our our audience, okay, they don't look at it with the same vantage point you guys do. Just like you said a minute ago about having ten, uh, eight different. Um, ignition curves mm -hmm. for the eight cylinders. A lot of folks watching this have no idea what that means. Right. And and um, it's also with in-cylinder um, cylinder measurement. Right. Having one, if a guy can buy a, a cylinder pressure monitor equipment, he's, he can buy one. Mm -hmm. And that's like having one wideband and a V8. <clears throat> you can get some information, but it's not but, but I just wanted the, everybody that's watching to realize this is pretty unique. And, and it's also, when you have everything you need, this is what you need to do next. Yeah, and what's frustrating about all this is how the engine is this like <clears throat> madden, maddeningly you know, complex series of dependent events, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm over here hyper-focused on this one thing and I get it just perfect, not realizing yeah. that it was affecting 10 other things in the engine. And now you got to go, and now, okay, I'll get this one right. And you're just constantly like, I feel like it's the domino effect. You move one thing and they all go, you know, you start all over again. <laughs> but, you know? but, but now go up 500 more RPMs and they'll do it again. Right. Yeah, so right. I mean, that's, <laughs> and that's, a different that's, the good thing about having why they, why they have 10 speed transmissions and stuff now, we can fine tune this torque band and fine tune this power right. band and get going. You know, that's one thing in like the NASCAR stuff where, like on these Finney stuff, they took away shift and kind of they made the gear read. Okay. So now our, you know, we're 80. We're 5,500 and 85. That's a whole different ball game than it is 7 to 8,500 because mm -hmm. now you get to tune this in. Now you're a lot further spread and it's like changes a lot. More. Well, and, and I don't think you could overemphasize, George, you were talking about having eight different spark maps, and I was thinking, no, oh, there's 40. Like we have okay, a yeah. different yeah. spark map. <laughs> yeah. There's a different spark map for each cylinder, but also for each it's gear RPM, because yes. I don't think people have enough understanding of how much the rate of acceleration actually affects the tune up as well you know so you end up with five gears and then eight cylinders and you know you got so it, it just gets crazy and some of the rate of acceleration is two different ways right yes. one of the rate of acceleration is just how quick you're going through the rpm mm -hmm. but when you're in fourth and fifth gear you're actually loaded more Ooh, yes. so people don't get this that when you spark that plug and then that pressure happens it tries to move the crankshaft out of the way which stops combustion. You don't stay. You don't stay combusting as long. But then you load the engine harder, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it can't push the, the piston out of the way as easy. You actually get better combustion. That these engines make more power when they're loaded harder yep. yes. than they do when they're loaded light. Yep. And that sort of thing just sort of blows people's mind. You know. Yeah. You've got these eight engines all connected eight, eight by one cylinder eight engines. one cylinder engines connected by a crankshaft, right. sharing a plenum on one side. Half of them are sharing a collector over here on one side. Half of them are sharing a collector over here, yeah. and they're doing all kinds of crazy things. They're 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 moving through the RPM at different speeds, and they're loaded. The <coughs> how much they're pushing against changes. Yeah, I think about you know your stuff going down there to Mexico, and the yeah. guy runs over a cactus, and now one header's. You know the collector's dented or whatever. Crash, wiped off, <laughs> gone. Yeah, not yeah, yeah, no longer. Exactly right. Or the air cleaner. I tell you, the biggest thing out there is we plug up air cleaners. Yeah, mm -hmm. they get so much I mean, silt and dust. They, and they get to where they're pulling. You know, we'll look at the, we look at KPA and you know if it's ninety nine down there because we're at the ocean, we'll get down to seventy eight. It's that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Up, and then it just completely. You're, you're back to plate racing again, huh? But I, I'm gonna go on. A, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm, I'm gonna go on a little pet peeve here. Yeah, because a lot of people listen don't have cylinder pressure data. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, drag racing, oval track, or nothing, when you go to the dyno, use the acceleration rate that you're going to be racing at. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because you can go tune up and, you know, oh, I'm going to do 100 RPM a second. <laughs> you, that tune up is going to be completely yep. different if you're at a quarter mile short track or a, or a half mile oval track race. Yep. There's no such thing as 100 RPM acceleration rate. You go do your timing and all that stuff, quit doing that. Use look, figure out what your acceleration rate is. It's pretty easy. If it's 250, if it's 500, dyno at that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have, at least then you're tuning up. You get the torque meter. You get this. You get to look at 
those RPMs, that timing, that stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. You'll be a lot better off than going there and going, oh yeah, look, I made this big number. Right. Mm. Quit worrying about that number. Look at what you're racing at and tune to, if that's what you only have. You yeah. know what I mean? It's very important to me that. I would say, I, even if you have combustion yeah, stuff, oh, you should exactly. be Still, yes. Still do because that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what we said, gear ratios are different. Absolutely. So you need to do it at, you know, when you go through the gears, the one, two, three, four gears, quick, five and six are slow. Well, that's the know? thing we saw when you, as the cycles, you're looking at each cycle, they're not all the same. No, Even right. the same cylinder, mm -hmm. it's not the same cycle to cycle to cycle. There's there's leftovers, there's crosstalk, all that. So, like you said, the, the speed at which it's happening is going to affect how much leftover than crosstalk there is. So, if you're not doing it at the right speed, you ain't getting it right. Yeah. So, um, one more quick morbid story. Okay. <laughs> when I die, I'm being cremated, mm -hmm. and Jason Lyons going to be pouring me down a motor. Okay. <laughs> right? And Randy Dorton asked me one time, he goes, why do you want to do that? I said, I want to see what it looks like. He goes, why? He said, 25 RPM later, it's going to look different. <laughs> I said, well, I want to see what that RPM looks hey, like. I got my hey, shot, though. He goes, then, but then he goes, you know you're going to wreck that motor. I go, I'm going to wreck one more on my way out the door. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yes. They all look different. Every, every RPM looks different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In every cycle. Yeah, 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 every cycle. Absolutely. And that's where we'll conclude this round table. Now my brain is melting as well. That's a nice share. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, well, I look that, that, forward to being there for that. Yeah. Can we, can we make that an event in the expo? Sure. Like, yeah. 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 I hope it's, right there. I hope it's, it's a long it's time like, away. I don't care what motor it is. I, I just want to see what it is as I'm going out the door. Oh, it has yeah. to be something good. Oh, oh yeah. I was going to say, it, I'll yeah. volunteer the dyno for okay. you. Okay. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There you go. Well, that was interesting. It's now an official event. <laughs> yes. I hope it's not soon, though. Breaking no, a lot of news. A long time, long time. But reason to subscribe because you never know what's going to go down. All right, we're going to throw it to our next video at Keebler and Lake. You guys are going to do a product demonstration in this next one. We're going to keep on trucking here exactly. at the Engine Performance Expo. Remember, subscribe, click the bell, let your friends know. It's a beautiful Saturday. We are live here at the Engine Performance Expo, and we're going to keep on trucking. What a day, what a day, what a day. My, yeah, my, brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.